Hi, this is Neil W. McCabe. I'm with Human Events, and today we're talking to Regnerate author Kate Obenshane. Kate, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Phenomenal. Wonderful. <laughs> you have a book, Divider in Chief. I do, very appropriately named. Yeah, because uh, what we've seen in the campaign so far has been sort of a division campaign, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? I would, but the real premise of the book is that that's been the Obama administration from day one. And this guy was elected saying that he was going to be the post-partisan president. He was going to trans transform America from that divided, um, attacking type um, country to the one that where we all can agree, where we can come together. He's going to listen to other people's ideas, to Republican ideas, and literally from day one, he has tried to shut down the opposition by dividing, turning people against each other, um, basically calling the opposition all sorts of uh, horrible names. No, in the book you talk about, even as a community activist, yes. organizer. What's an example of something he did in his early days in Chicago? Well, he was known to be, among the other community organizers, he was known to be the master of fomenting discontent, basically stirring the pot. And the community organizers that he worked with, they were all Saul Alinsky disciples, basically. And what they did was they went into an area, they pinpointed the angst or, or what, um, what individuals were upset about, and they took that and they, they um, stoked it. They fanned the flames of discontent and they tried to find an enemy, somebody to turn individuals against. And that way they were able to um, ram through basically their objective, their, um, their agenda. And that's what we've seen him do at, with his community organizing expertise, which was basically his only expertise when he became president. We've seen him take that expertise, the master Well, I understand he was also very good at scoring pot. Yeah, I've heard about that, <laughs> but um, yeah, and that was probably one of his qualifications. I don't know. Um, the media didn't really look into that, did sure. they? They didn't really vet him. All no, they thoroughly, didn't. There wasn't so. a lot of vetting. But as a, but we can see in day <laughs> one from the White House, yeah. almost the first thing he did was he said, L "Rush Limbaugh is an enemy of the state." Right, and of course, in his inaugural address, he said, "I want to listen to Republicans. I want to hear what they have to say." Then he met, do you remember when he met with Eric Cantor and the other Republicans to hear their ideas on the economy? Cantor lays out the conservative vision of limited government, and Obama literally said to him, I won, I can trump you on that. Then he went on to say, I don't want to hear so much from you all anymore, you all that caused this problem. Right. We're not going to be listening to you. I just want to hear from my side. Then what did he do during the health care debate? Not only did he not listen to the Republican perspective, he shut them out of the debate. There was no C-SPAN. The American people didn't see what was going on, but neither did the Republicans. No input. Actually, the lobbyists had all the input, something that he promised would not happen in his administration. But this this whole division and pitting Americans against each other is not just causing discord, but it's actually shutting out half of the population from the, de the debate. He doesn't want to hear their ideas. He doesn't want the input. And that's what our country is based on. It's based on the free and open exchange of ideas. I'm not saying in Divider in Chief that division isn't a good thing. It is a good thing. But legitimate discussion of ideas is what we're after. Obama doesn't want to hear any ideas. He just wants to divide Americans. As we approach the election, um, what is it that somebody reading this book would understand that they wouldn't understand if they hadn't read the book? Well, I think they would understand how deeply this president is trying to distract um, from his economic failings, the really the disaster that has been this administration by dividing Americans, by pitting them one against another. And how that is, I mean, it's bothersome, it's, um, it's, it's just not the way we do things, but what, what really concerns me is that it's fundamentally un-American. It goes against the very essence of who we are as Americans because what this whole divide and conquer strategy does is literally silences half of the American public. It's not just that Obama disagrees with them, so he argues with them a little bit. He actually vilifies them. He's able to shut them down and shut out the discourse. He doesn't like the messiness of Congress, of intellectual um, discourse. You saw him when he was, whenever he's talking to the Republicans in Congress, this look of just disdain that he's having to have this discussion. He's shutting them down, and that's not what America is. We were formed on vigorous 
um, disc discord. Um, the founders, they had different ideas about how America should be founded. And because they argued the ideas, the substance, we were able to achieve the greatest ideas. Never, That's what we need to be doing when now. When you're vilified, you're disenfranchised. Totally. Because, because you are hateful, and we because hate you, you hate women, we don't care what you think you about no the economy. Have a voice. We don't care what you think about sixteen trillion dollars in debt. We don't care what you think about the escalating rate of welfare and food stamps because you hate poor people, you hate women, um, you hate gays, you hate immigrants. We don't want to hear what you have to say. That is truly destructive to the American way, to coming up with the best ideas that will cure our ills and put us on the path to prosperity. Well, I'm proud to say that division was never one of my strong suits in school. <laughs> so I guess we can be friends. Thank you very I much, Kate. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>